Today's lesson is on judging grains, in particular, barley. When I have students first to learn how to judge, I have them, I first of all, take a look at all the samples. I'm looking for consistency more than anything else in its condition, in its, its color, um, its uniformity in size and shape. All those things are important to tell us a little bit about the sample. As I'm doing here, I'm just, just very quickly going over each one of those and kind of taking note of the consistency of the quality throughout the entire sample. Well, the next step is to take a look at each individual sample more thoroughly, more carefully. Like here in number one, we notice a small black shiny seed that I'll talk about a little bit later. But we're looking for reproducible versus non-reproducible factors. Things, reproducible factors, are things that will multiply themselves out in the field, which will cause probably more problems. And number two is what I'm sorting through this. You'll notice that there are some broken kernels. There's some kernels without holes. Uh, and those are things that we would call non-reproducible non factors, things that really don't cause much of a problem in terms of reproducing itself out in the field. So number two actually looks pretty good, um, pretty clean. Now as you look at number three, what I'm doing is taking this credit card or a or an index card and piling all, all of the seed off to one side. So then what I'll do is I'll slowly reveal layer by layer um, each of the things that could be uh, a problem in that particular sample. And this actually looks, if you can see, the, the seeds are pretty plump. But then we um, take a look at two seeds that, again, I will identify a little bit later, but those are some problems. So that's number three, has those two seeds that may cause some, uh, a bit of a, uh, an issue. Now, if you look at number four really quickly, you notice that this is also a, a very clean, uh, plump sample, but there's some off colors in there, and that typically means there could be something um, different about the variety of, of the seeds that you're looking at. A, sl a slight change in color or, or possibly shape probably means there's a varietal problem and here's one right here so you can see the white barley right next to the blue barley. It's supposed to be white barley that we're actually judging. The next phase then is to take a look at each individual uh, sample with a little bit more detail. As we saw in the first part of this you'll notice this shiny round black seed. It's called pigweed. It's a reproducible factor and something we consider a common weed. Sample number two, if we can take a look at it more carefully, we'll see that it's plump, it's lustrous, it has a, a good amount of consistency, it's in size, shape, and color, and all I can really fault it for is a few broken kernels. Uh, this one looks like a pretty good sample that we may be using at, at the top of our class today. But if you take a look, it um, really doesn't have a whole lot of uh, uh, reproducible factors. Number three, it's pretty easy to find out what the problem is here. These, these uh, two very large seeds, really angular, and if you looked at it really carefully, the seed coat's kind of rough. This is field bindweed. Some people call it morning glory. Uh, it's one that tangles itself in uh, the crop, and it's really hard to uh, get rid of. So this is called a noxious weed. For sample number four, we have some seeds that are kind of discolored. Well, they look discolored. Well, typically that is a tip-off that's a varietal problem. As I stated before, that's blue barley, the, the one on the top there, kind of uh, darker in color, gives it kind of a blue hue. Um, and that's a problem in that in the field that we could have cross-pollination, reducing the actual consistency. Now, when we're looking at the samples, um, you're going to also have to keep in mind and, and teach them there's a scorecard involved in it. And they don't have to necessarily memorize it, but they have to have some kind of, of uh, comfort with it. So essentially what it's broken down into is it's broken down into two things, reproducible factors and non-reproducible non factors. These reducible factors, reproducible factors, are things that, that will be reproducing themselves out in the field, whether it be disease, whether it be noxious weeds, varieties, other crops, and common weeds. And if you take a look at the scorecard, you can see that the thing that has the greatest impact on seeds that aren't uh, small seed legume happens to be noxious weeds, 25-point deduction. So typically when you see a noxious weed, it's going to put it in the bottom half of the class. Whereas a common weeds, such as pigweed that we've already identified, um, you can see that that's going to have a terrific impact on it. 
So let's take a look at these. As I stated before, uh, sample number one has these small, round, shiny black seeds. They're pigweed. Um, they're a common weed. They're relatively easy to control. It's easy to get the seed out because they're so tiny. So it's not much of a deduction. But if we take a look and compare it with number two, sample number two, you can see number two is very plump and a lustrous seed. It's been well cared for in the field as well as the cleaner and processing plant. So it's dried at the, at the, the right temperature. I didn't have too much water in it. Um, so this particular seed is probably going to yield a, a seed that's going to be uh, very vigorous out in the field and compete against the weeds. But also it, it, it's also going to uh, yield well and it's have a good germination rate. Now when we get to sample number three, it's a bit of a problem. It too is a clean seed except for the fact that it has these triangular black seeds or brownish seeds and they're basically morning glory or field bindweed. It happens to be a noxious weed. It's very difficult to control in the field. It's hard to get rid of. Um, it also, uh, in large amounts, can, can harm equipment. And then lastly, um, and that, this one was a little bit tougher, uh, primarily because uh, you had to look at slight differences in seed color. Seed color and shape sometimes means there's going to be a difference in variety. And that and that's happens in this case. This one seed right here, this dark one, um, is kind of an off color. It, it's a black or a blue uh, um, kind of a shading. And so it kind of looks blue in the sample. So that's a difference in variety. So you have a white barley, which we're, we're judging, and, the, and a few blue barleys. So somehow during the, the bagging process, probably in, in the cleaner, there was still some, some blue barley in the equipment. It got stuck in that. And if it goes out in the field, then you're going to have a lack of consistency and maybe even crossbreeding. Uh, so what happens is instead of a, just a, a, a pure uh, uh, bag of white barley, you're going to have some, some blue mixed in with it. And of course, it, they don't get the, uh, the return as, as they normally would. So that's uh, how we would judge it. So if you're looking at all of that, uh, what you're going to see um, primarily is probably number two is going to be your uh, best sample because it, it it's a free from inert material. It's free from reproducible factors like nauseous weed, etc. Our second place is going to be according to what we just went over. Uh, number one, it's also clean. It's also bright. It's lustrous, but it has a common weed. So probably number one will be our second place. And then uh, if we go over to sample number three, or excuse me, in sample number four, uh, you can see that it does have a mixture of variety, which is a 20-point deduction. So we're going to put number four in the third position. And then lastly, uh, because of the noxious weeds, obviously sample number three is going to be the bottom of our class today. So according to uh, the scorecard, that's how we would uh, place it. So let's take a look at uh, the, the samples one more time. Can give you an idea to look at it. Here's sample number two is in first place. Sample number one is going to be in second place because of the common weed. In third place, we're going to have sample number four. It has blue barley in it because it's a mixture of variety. And then lastly, in position number four in last place today is going to be sample number three because of the field bind weed. I hope this helped. And the next group of things, I'm just going to show you a little bit about how to give reasons. Thanks. Class of barley in the order of two, one, four, three. In my top sample today, plate number two, I place it in first primarily because of its luster and its plumpness, meaning high vigor in the field. Sample number one was in second place today, primarily because it too showed a, a, a good amount of consistency, because, but it, because it had its common weeds, pigweed, I placed it in second. And in, in the third position today, I put sample number four. Sample number four was also a very treated type. Unfortunately, it had blue barley, a mixture of variety. And in the last place today, I put plate number three. It had field bindweed, a noxious weed.